Good morning. Good morning. Good today. Good morning. Um, we'd just like to start off. Today is September 11th, so I just wanted to start today off uh, for that horrific anniversary. But let us remember those first responders and those victims uh, from now 22 years ago. So it went full 21, 19, 21 years. So we'll, we'll have prayers, prayers, uh, prayers for 9-11. Chancel Flowers today are brought to us by the Casadilla family for Andrew's birthday. I have a note here for summer hymns. Are we still collecting summer hymns even though it's autumn? I think we're Okay. Well, if you have an idea for him, please share. But maybe we'll categorize them as fall hymns or autumn hymns. Okay. Uh, fellowship will be... After the service today in, in Glen Hall, church council meeting is going to be Tuesday, September 20th. Um, that will be via Zoom at 7 p.m. Uh, and a couple more announcements. We have an animal blessing coming up Saturday, October 1st. That will be here at 10 a.m. And the trumper tree is at the end of October for Halloween. And that's Saturday, October 29th from 4 to 6. If you're interested in volunteering or if Vanessa hasn't bothered you yet, Please, <laughs> please contact Vanessa. We need cars, we need trunks, we need volunteers, we need candy. Um, this will be the first time we're doing the trunk retreat post-COVID, post-pandemic. So we're going to go back to the non-drive-through format, and this will be a walk-around format. So we're really looking forward to that, and uh, we're all excited. Other than that, I don't have anything else except this week one in the NFL. Bubba has an announcement. Bubba, oh, oh. Okay. Interested in that. Just wanted to let all of you know that we are going to be interviewing a candidate for the pastor's position on Saturday, September 23rd. He's coming into town on Thursday, and so the council will be conducting the interview, and then we'll bring a recommendation to the congregation after that. So please keep all of us in your prayers and keep our candidate in your prayers, and obviously uh, his or her status is confidential at this point until the council is ready to make a recommendation. But there's progress, and that's a good thing. Okay. Thank you. So that's exciting news for St. Mark's. I am not the candidate. <laughs> okay. Not eligible, nor qualified, nor any of the above. Uh, anyway, that leads us to our opening hymn. Today's opening hymn is 807, Come the Font of Every Blessing. Please rise.
Amen. All right. Just to get this lady, we can go ahead. I'll move these cars. Don't be a rubber necker. Don't be a rubber necker. Watch where you're going. Exodus, the 32nd chapter. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people who you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods. O Israel, you brought, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me, let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God, and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was, the, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn, your, turn from your wrath, your fierce wrath. Change your mind and do not bring disaster on Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sins. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. I can see only that I sin, and don't know what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born. Steeped in weakness, wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth, deep within me, and the well of no wisdom, deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body of broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. A second reading from 1 Timothy, the first chapter. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I have acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. For that reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him from eternal life. 
To the King of Ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. watches, cards, toys, etc., sure. But never sheep, never a coin either, or any money at all, coins or otherwise. Money never makes its way to the lost and found, does it? Because found money is made money, right? I just found $5. I just made $5. In financing, that's called earned income or accounts receivable. It's not just dollars. We've been picking up pennies off the ground since we were children. Some of us were even picking up pennies before we could walk and unfortunately putting them in our mouths. But um, now, some, grow, some folks never really grow out of seeing a penny and picking it up. I got a story. One day, a young boy named Charlie tried to pick up a quarter he saw at the park. Someone had super glued this quarter to the sidewalk, and Charlie was embarrassed. Of course, Charlie didn't know it was super glued to the, uh, to the sidewalk, but the, the person did. And, uh, well, Charlie was humili humiliated, and in that humiliation, he sought, he sought vengeance. Certain that one day, this, I guess it was a big brother of a friend of his, was going to pick up the little brother from Charlie's house, so he had schemed a plan. Charlie super glued his own quarter on the sidewalk in front of his house. But lo and behold, that day would never come because only days later, his parents were hosting a church get together at their house. And 80 year old Felix Becker came in hand, grating his fingernails on the concrete and the sidewalk, failed to lift that quarter that was super glued the sidewalk before another guest finally broke into Felix saying that coin was not budging that coin was not budging that coin would not be his Charlie heard the commotion and saw some guests giggling and actually felt a little ashamed Charlie had long forgotten about the quarter before his parents event and unfortunately the quarter found an unintended victim and uh, it was a different one than he had intended and that super glued quarter denied Felix the joy of finding that money the way the sweeping lady from the gospel reading was able to feel the joy to celebrate the finding of her coin. 
Now you must remember this coin that the sweeping lady had found was not simply just a dime or a nickel or a quarter. This was one of 10 silver pieces. This probably represented about 10% of her annual income. Now, say you're milling around the house and you happen to misplace 10% of your annual income, whether it be $5,000, $10,000, $15,000. If you found $15,000 laying around your house, how would you feel? That is the joy this woman had upon finding the silver piece in her home. Now, if you remember the other story from the Gospel reading today, Jesus talked about a good shepherd. That good shepherd was equally joyous in reuniting one of the lost sheep from his flock. Jesus understood the reigning in of a stray from his flock was cause for celebration and was not cynical about it, for Jesus was a shepherd too. A shepherd of men, of course. Do you have good shepherds in your life? Do our leaders, our bosses, our CEOs understand good shepherding? Do our leaders recover us when we stray? Or do they put power, profits, and property ahead of people? Now, a good shepherd is not satisfied until all his sheep are safe. I know I am not perfect, but I know that the Lord is my shepherd, and I am fortunate to be in his flock with all of you. Have I strayed? Haven't we all? There's a wonderful story about Maya Angelou, she was an active member of Glide Memorial United Methodist Church in San Francisco before her death. She wrote that when she first came to San Francisco as a young woman, she became sophisticated. She said that was what you were supposed to do when you go to San Francisco, you became sophisticated. And for that reason, she said she became agnostic. She thought the two went together. She, th she said, that it wasn't that she stopped believing in God, just that God no longer frequented the neighborhood she frequented. She was taking voice lessons at the time. Her teacher gave her an, ex an exercise where she was to read out of some religious pamphlet. The reading ended with these words, God loves me. She finished the reading, put the pamphlet down. The teacher said, I want you to read that last sentence again. So she picked it up, read it again, this time somewhat sarcastically, then put it down again. The teacher said, read it again. She read it again. Then she described what happened. After about the seventh repetition, I began to sense there might, there might be some truth in this statement. God loves me. That there was a possibility that God really loves me. Maya Angelou, I suddenly began to cry at the grandness of it all. I knew if God loved me, I could do wonderful things. I could do great things. I could learn anything. I could achieve anything for what I could stand, for what could stand against me with God, since one person, any person with God, form a majority now. That was Maya Angelou's words. But I love the use of, her, of the word grandness there. I don't know if any of you have ever felt that before, but I love how revelatory, revelatory she is about it, how awakened she becomes. Just like in today's Psalms, Psalm 52:10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. My spirit was renewed. The sinner has returned. The flock is reunited. She was lost, but now she's found. Amen. And rightly so, our hymn of the day is Amazing Grace. Please stand. The flock is reunited. How sweet the sound. Amen.
Let us confess the words of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Your people receive mercy, and your grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love, and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our economic and interreligious commitments. God of grace. Yeah, we are Your creation groans as it suffers the impacts of pollution and lack of care. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Bless us with bountiful harvests that all may share. God of grace. Yeah, we are Your world is shattered and the nations rage. rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom in our elected leaders so that we know peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. God of grace. Amen. Your, your children wander homeless, and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost, or lonely, anxious, or depressed, or struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in any need, especially Robin, Dolly, Werner, Margarita, Juan Luis, Viviana, Calista, Gerardo, Darlene, Andres, Don, Barbara, Anna Maria, Ed, Ozzy, Earl, Carlos, Vaughn, Barnaby, Rita, Heidi, the Clancy family, Greg, Judy, Kimberly, Cynthia, Stephanie, Maria, Emilis, and Margaret, Nicolas, Ninoska, Andrew, Maury, Kirk, Grace of God, the God of God. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community that we serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name, God of grace. Amen. We have a special prayer for Terry Diota, that she's in the hospital. Your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives. And receive us with your joy when we come to share eternal life with you. God of grace. Share our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace. 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 Please present your gift for tithes and your offerings.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide uh, for your need, for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. 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 The Lord remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, who gives life to all things, frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today is hymn number 676, Lord, speak to us that we may speak. Please rise.